Hey, so today I want to talk about something that comes up quite a bit in the studio um, and I've been asked countless times over the years and that is band management and how it all works, what is it, what to look out for and honestly I've heard some absolute horror stories. So I'm hoping in this video to clear up a few questions and give you guys uh, a rough idea of what you should be looking for, what you should be expecting and what's expected of you. So I think before we start, it's worth mentioning that what I'm about to say is my opinion only, and uh, it's based on my experience working in the music industry for the last 15 years. So what is band management? And I think this is a really good question and a really tough one to answer because it very much depends on where you, the artist, is in your career. Are you starting out? Have you been going a few months, maybe a couple of years, you've got your first album under your belt? and maybe a couple of decent tours or have you been going for 30, 40, maybe 50 years and you've got countless releases under your belt and you've done multiple world tours and you're still trying to climb and climb and climb. So let's start at the beginning. If you're a new band, you got together, maybe you've been together for a few years. Management that I've seen working with these kind of artists can be a little bit hit and miss because these guys uh, have probably been doing management the same amount of time or maybe a little bit longer or maybe less than you guys have been a band. So they're still trying to find their feet in the door and testing the waters and figuring out how it all works. Now I've seen guys take care of everything from booking shows and festivals right through to sorting out merch and helping with websites and EPKs and things like that. So it really depends on you know, what your strengths are as a band and what your weaknesses are and where you need help. Now, there are a few things to look out for. The first of which, and I see all too often, these management companies that come along and they set, uh, they have a monthly fee. So you'll pay them 80, 120, 150, maybe 200, 250 pound a month. And uh, they will sign maybe 10, 15, I've seen 20 bands on a single guy's roster. And let's be honest, 20 bands between one guy is not even a day a week per band. That is if they're full time. So it doesn't really leave much legwork, you know, wiggle room to get things done. And I've heard a lot of stories about this happening, uh, especially on you know, the local scene. Um, and with newer bands and there are some guys that have taken advantage of this and advantage of bands and their dreams and completely screwed them over and honestly that really pisses me off these bands they're starting out and they're trying desperately to climb up the ladder trying to get noticed and they deserve way more respect than that a lot of the bigger management they will take commission uh, they are more experienced, so they are uh, more confident that they're able to bring in uh, higher fees and better shows and better contacts and be able to push things up the ladder a little bit. Now, why do I think commission is better than a monthly fee? If you're on commission based, you, your income as a manager is based on how well your artists, your roster, are doing. Now, if you have multiple bands all sat around doing maybe a handful of festivals and that's pretty much it, you're not really gonna be earning that much. While if you work really hard and you've got multiple bands touring all year round and they're doing loads of festivals and they're on TV and they're all over the radio, then these managers are gonna be doing pretty well. Now, in terms of what percentage, yeah, this can vary somewhere between 15, 17 and a half, and I've seen as high as 20%. Um, and that very much depends on what they're able to bring to the table. And it's got to be right for you. There is no A, B, C, this is how you manage a band, this is how a band works, off you go. World tours, hello, I am Aiden. It's not how it works. Each band is different, each opportunity is different. 
and it should be tailored to that artist. You know, you, just because it works for one artist, it doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna work for the other five sat around. So making sure that uh, your management, if you're looking, are not overbooked, not stretching themselves too thin. And they also want the band to be able to succeed as much as you guys do. The only way the band is going to work and have a successful career and be able to climb up the ladder is if they have a strong team behind them that is as passionate as you guys are. Because if you, you know, the saying is your chain is only as strong as your weakest link. Now, if your weakest link is management, bad news, mate. Like, it's, it's not going to end well. And I feel like a lot of unsigned bands especially feel the need that they should be with management. And again, I don't necessarily agree with this. I think it is definitely better to be without management than be to be with the wrong management. Just because you're not represented doesn't mean that you can't climb, doesn't mean that things can't progress, and doesn't mean that you need a manager. I don't think that's the case at all. I think it's definitely worth waiting for the right management and the right team behind you in order to work forward. So the next thing we can look at is, are you ready for management? Because just because you sign a management deal, if you don't have the right things in place, there's not a whole lot managers can do for you. You've got to be able to put yourselves in a position where everything is ready and the managers have the right content, uh, the right tools in place in order to do their job. Now, this includes things like all your social media, promotional pictures, you know, for tour posters and um, single album releases, things like that. Uh, some sort of visual content, whether that be music videos, you know, proper live uh, shot videos, um, lots of social media content, things like that. Also things like merch, you, know, you wanna be able to have some way that once you start building a fan base and you have a fan base, that you can start bringing in some more money to help generate and build things up uh, so you can do bigger and better for, for the next release, for the next tour and help fund some of these things. And also things like EPKs and websites. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, an EPK is like a, a CV for the band. What the band is, who they are, what they've done, uh, what they sound like, all your logos and things. And if you're still unsure on this, um, I can do a, a separate video on that, go in into a bit more detail. And also, simple things like making sure you have the right logos and the right artwork and the right format in to be able to use it for the right products. There is no point having a, a tiny little album cover as your artwork if you want that printed on a massive eight meter backdrop. It's, it's not gonna happen. So you need to be able to make sure that you have these things in place for them to use beforehand. So, I feel like I've waffled on for a little bit now um, and I'm hoping that I've cleared up maybe a, a few questions and a, um, a few things that maybe you were unsure on. Uh, if you've got any questions, hit them down in the comments and if there's things that you'd like me to cover, like me to talk about, let me know as well. Um, hopefully I've, I've cleared a few things up for you and um, yeah, till next time, take it easy.